place to be. Uh, in 2001, I was working in the Washington Bureau of uh, the Cable News Network as an assignment editor. I've always had a love for the fire service, so uh, what I've been doing for many years is, in my free time, I was riding with uh, DC fire units or responding to incident scenes and videotaping them as the unpaid civilian photographer for DC fire and EMS. I was working at the assignment desk in Washington that morning. And our New York Bureau had a beauty shot camera on their uh, bureau, which was a high rise building around uh, Penn Station. It looked south. And they put out a shot from that camera. And I looked up and I saw that there was a impact into the uh, tower number one that was several stories high. I mean, when the tower fell, I knew right away that many firefighters were dead. I said, they're in there. They're doing what they're supposed to be doing. And that tower went down. And you know, there's, not, there's no survival there. At some point, my Capitol Hill producer calls me and he says, Vito, what is that tremendous cloud of smoke drifting across the mall? I knew we didn't have a fire call. And I had this instinctive reaction. I switched, I had all scanners and two-way radio. I switched my radio to the frequency for the Metropolitan Washington Airport Fire Department. And I did, and the first thing I hear is Red 341, those are those code, code names for the, their crash trucks. Red 341, Red 342, shut down the airport. We're responding to the Pentagon. We've had a plane hit the Pentagon. The idea of me sitting in the newsroom was not in my psyche. So I convinced my boss to let me respond to the Pentagon. Immediately I could see the magnitude of the destruction. The collapse had already taken place. There's a tremendous amount of fire burning. So I got on my gear. I had firefighting gear. And I started to document the scene. And um, I remember uh, I have video of a piece of the aircraft, small piece of the aircraft on the ground, clearly with the colors identifying the, the airline and um, would look like a, uh, a window. I remained at the Pentagon, shot videotape. And um, eventually uh, I connected, when I connected back with CNN, um, they said, um, you know, we'll, we're probably gonna send you to New York. Um, so I got marching orders the next morning I drove to New York and I helped coordinate CNN's coverage of uh, the aftermath for a couple of weeks. Now I'm from New York and I had a, a very close association with the uh, FDNY. I literally grew up in the New York City firehouse in the Bronx. Uh, every morning I would walk from my hotel to the CNN bureau and I would pass engine 54 and ladder 4 uh, on 8th Avenue. And that particular firehouse lost more firefighters than any other single firehouse in the city between the three companies that were there. And every morning you'd walk by and you'd see the flowers and the candles get, you know, people, more and more people would be putting tributes to the firefighters. And, uh, and I just thought about the pain and the suffering that was taking place inside those doors. But also the fact that when the call came, those doors were going up and that apparatus was going out. They were going to continue to do their job because they knew that's what they had to do. We use the mantra, never forget. But never forget is more than two words. It means you need to know what happened and why it happened and the sacrifice that took place that day. We never forget the sacrifices of any of our people. We always honor their memory. And the rest of the nation needs to remember to honor the memory of those who died on 9-11.